What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you guys all the accessories and gears that you need to keep on you or to wear to keep yourself warm if you plan on riding your e-bike or even a scooter or maybe even a motorcycle uh, throughout the winter. I'm, I'm talking about everything from all the way to the top of the head, which is the helmet, down to the various socks and shoes that you actually need to keep yourself warm. If you're here for that, stay tuned and keep watching. Okay, I'm gonna start from the head and walk my way down to the toes. The first thing is a full face helmet. See, I was one of those people that initially I thought that wearing a full face helmet on an e-bike just seems ridiculous. It seems goofy and quite frankly, to me, it felt stupid. But <laughs> when you try to ride in a colder temperature, you would quickly see that a full face helmet is indeed necessary. It's necessary because it blocks the wind from, you know, freezing your face off. So I'm one of those people that I'm actually anemic. I have low blood iron, so I get cold really fast and I cannot ride in the winter. But ever since buying this ailment, man, it's made my life so, so much easier. It's made me, it made me feel comfortable riding. The reason why I went with this helmet specifically is I like the way it looks. I don't want something that looks super goofy. Um, even though this is an a e-bike that looks like a motorcycle, it's still an e-bike. Now, this thing can go 50, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like your regular e-bike, but nevertheless, it's still a bicycle. It's just a super fast bicycle. So I went with this helmet because it looks cool, you know, it doesn't look too ridiculous and I like the fact that it has this part right here that can come off so it's called it's it's essentially I guess modular this part comes off the reason why this part uh, is necessary for me is because as you can see I have hair putting the helmet on without removing this part is kind of difficult this is a double XL and it still feels tight on my head but that's because I have so much hair so removing this part right here just allows me to put this helmet on easier. That's it. Some people, you know, don't mind. Some people would ride like this. But for me, if I get to a point where I can ride like this, then I don't need a full face helmet. I would just wear my other helmet because I already don't want to wear something like this anyways. So removing this part right here kind of defeats the purpose of just riding like this. But it is an option if you're one of those people. So this goes into it. Uh, so once you put your helmet on, it goes into it and it clicks in and you can drop this down, you know, to protect the wind. So this part right here, it actually has an opening that can uh, open and close. It has a switch right here that allows for hair to go in and out. And this part right here, it can be replaced with, the, uh, with a clear visor. But I personally, initially, I thought that I would have to buy the clear one, but riding at night, I actually find this to be sufficient. I don't have no problem seeing it at all. Maybe it's because my headlights are bright, but either way, I have no problem with these dark ones at all. Now, one of the biggest problems with full face helmet in the winter is fog, because uh, they, they quickly fog up, right? And that is why I bought something that helps with, uh, with fogging. I'm gonna put an overlay on the screen of what I bought to actually help with, flog, uh, with fogging. Ever since I put that on, no fog at all. It also has some vents that you can open and close at the top, you know, that way you can let the steam out or whatever. This part right here is very adjustable. It's just very, very easy to put it on. Uh, well, it's quite easy to secure it. With my hairstyle, it's a bit, it's a bit of a challenge to put it on. But once I get it on, it stays perfectly fine. So I will highly recommend this right here, this particular helmet. There are many, you know, helmets that you can buy, but a full face helmet, it's definitely a necessity when riding an e-bike. Now, talk about the head. The helmet, the helmet alone is not enough, especially when it's very cold. So the next thing is this right here. The next thing I would recommend is this. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but everything is gonna be linked in the description. 
this right here, I actually wear it before I put my helmet on because some of that cold hair just still sips through. And what I really like about this is that it just goes over the head and completely covers the neck. So highly recommend this. If you don't want to get this, there's another one that I have, which is uh, F face, which is just something like this. You, you wrap it around your, your face and you pretty much put it together and it just completely covers your chin like that when riding so you can put your helmet on and if you try to ride in the winter time you will understand if you've never done it in the winter time all this might seem unnecessary but if you have or if you live in a cold climate then you would truly see that i mean you would know that these things are necessary so that is that the next thing is the the jacket so i was one of those people that would wear like three layers of hoodies and all kinds of stuff and I will still be cold until somebody told me that what you need is a, is a windbreaker, not just a hoodie. You don't, it's not necessarily a thick layer of clothes. You need a windbreaker. So I have this right here, which you can't buy on Amazon because I actually bought this from a college friend. I was in college and this guy's made some outfit and I bought one of these. The reason I really, really love this is because it has this, uh, I don't know what kind of material this is, but it's, it's very, very thick and it's reflective. As you guys can see in the video, it's very, very reflective at nighttime. It just, I just stand out. It's like wearing a, a glow stick or something. So it's highly reflective at night. People will see me with no problem and it really, really keeps me warm. I'm gonna try and find one on Amazon and link it in the description. If you don't have something like that, I would hope that you can get something like this, another windbreaker. I used to wear this a lot, you know, with my dress outfit. But you want you want something like this. How do you know it's a proper one? Well, if you pour, if you splash water on it, if the the water just bounces right off, that is exactly what you're wearing. So you want something like this or this, and then have a layer of uh, something soft, you know, like a wool, something thicker, like a hoodie or something underneath. But remember that windbreaker. So that is it for the, for the jacket. The next thing you want is a neck wrap or uh, what is it called? It's a, it's a scarf. The reason for the scarf is whenever you wear something like this, right? They have a zipper. And what I find is that in the middle of the zipper, when you actually feel the wind. So to, to uh, compensate for that, I just wrap this around and just have it like this. So this sits on top and it prevents any wind from coming in. That is great. If you don't have this, you can always wear a backpack and turn the backpack around. But this is gonna be so, so much better than a backpack. Now, so that is that. The next thing is gloves. If you live in a very, in, in a decently cold climate, you can just wear something like this, that's fine. But if you live in a very cold climate, uh, climate in, uh, in a very cold place like Ohio, I don't know, somewhere really cold. Here in Virginia, it does. It gets cold in Virginia, but like I said, I'm anemic, so I get cold really fast. Uh, I think that the lowest I can recall our temperatures dropping down to is like maybe 15 or something like that. That's cold, very cold, but some places are like, we're talking about single digits or even negative. But anyways, you want heated gloves. Because if you're walking around, you know, uh, 50, 40, 30 degrees is fine just walking around. But when you're on a bike that is actually moving faster, your hands get, begin to freeze and you're going to have a hard time breaking. Your fingers are going to have a slower reaction time. So God forbid somebody pull up, uh, somebody pull in front of you or something, you can easily break. But you need that reaction time. If your hands are freezing, you're not gonna have that. Your, your fingers are gonna be slow to react. So heated gloves, I'm gonna put a link in the description. Some of the reviews that I've seen on these gloves are not so great, but that is not my experience. My experience is this works great. As a matter of fact, most of the reviews that I see for heated gloves, they're just not that good. I don't know why, but 
these are very great. Now, if you live in a, uh, oh, another thing is they have a finger, uh, they have a touchscreen thing on the fingertips, so you can use that. But if you live in somewhere that these gloves will not suffice, then you can wear something like this underneath the uh, the gloves. I mean, underneath the gloves. That way you have more protection for your fingers. So the next thing we want to talk about is pants. Now I personally use this pants because I I actually got it off Amazon. Uh, I was doing a research on how to protect your legs. What I did was what I found is that everybody on YouTube is recommending jackets, recommending gloves, but nobody's talking about pants and the legs get so cold when you're riding. I'm just like, am I the only one that gets cold on my legs? I don't know, but I guess so because I could not find videos like that. But anyways, you want a pant like this, also a windbreaker. So what I did was I bought one of these off Amazon for like, I think uh, 20 or $30 or something like that. I was a little skeptical at first because I was like, man, it's so cheap. I don't know how it will do, but a lot of people would say that, it, you know, it was a lot of good reviews. So I bought one. I said, the worst thing that can happen is I return it. And sure enough, it works great. So what I do, what I do is I actually wear sweatpants underneath this. Now, if you want to make this even better, you can actually buy two of those and wear them together. What I recommend is if you're buying something like this, buy a length that is longer than what you would typically wear. That way you can completely cover your whole legs. But ever since I've been wearing this pant, it's been a game changer for me when I'm riding in the cold. So highly recommended. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, shoe and socks. So I'm going to start with the socks. You want something thick, something like this. I actually bought, uh, you know, I think I bought like three or four pair of this. I've been wearing this every winter, even before I started riding my bike during the winter because I get cold really fast. I like this socks because it has like this wool. It's very thick. It's much thicker than your regular socks. So you will need uh, a slightly larger, larger shoes. So if regular socks doesn't work for you in the winter time when you're riding your bike, definitely get something like this. Once again, everything will be linked in the description. Now, followed by the shoes. The shoes are very, very important. Otherwise, your legs are going to get cold. I mean, your feet are going to get cold because the wind is just hitting it. You know, if you pedal, it creates your body generates heat, which will help you a little bit. But in those really, really cold temperatures, the longer you are out there, the more colder you get. What I have is this shoe right here by Columbia. Uh, you know, it looks, you know, it's, it's normal. It's not what I would typically wear every day around. It's, you know, I would wear like my Nikes, my Jordans, my Adidas, you know, stuff like that. But this right here in the cold is so much better. It's by Columbia. I mean, even that jacket was by Columbia. So you can definitely, as you can see, it has that, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like that reflective material. Basically, it keeps heat in your feet. And I've never had cold feet wearing these shoes with their socks together. So if I can find this Amazon on Amazon, I didn't buy this off Amazon. I bought this at the store. I think I bought it from a Nike store, actually. So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend get, getting you one of these right here. Highly, highly important. Okay, so that is all the clothing that you need. The next thing I want to talk about is how to keep yourself ready in case anything happens. So when it gets cold, right, the last thing you want is for you to be stranded somewhere and you're trying to uh, fix your tires or whatever, but you got cold hands or it's just cold in general. I would definitely recommend having a portable electric pump because if you have one of those, you know, manual pumps or you don't even have a pump at all, you'll be stranded for you'll be stranded and you'll be struggling. But if you have an electric pump like this, it would definitely save you a whole lot of headaches. Uh, it would, you know, I would link something like this in the description where you know where you can get one. It would definitely help you out. Uh, I personally have a tool kit that I keep in here with, along with my batteries. Speaking of batteries, when it comes to riding an e-bike, what you would want to do is you would want to keep your bike in a place in a, in a place where the temperature is ideal. So, for example, most lithium ion batteries would do better in a 59 to like 95 degree uh, temperature. So ideally, you want to keep it inside your house where it actually is warm 
or in your garage if you typically leave the heater on. If you don't do that, the performance of your battery would will be lower, much, much lower. So in the winter time, always charge your battery 100%. I know that you know it's it's better even when you don't charge your battery all the way full, but in the winter time, you absolutely want to charge your battery all the way full because for one, your batteries need to balance out anyways, and two, it's not like you're doing that the whole year. You're only doing that during the winter time because your range would already be decreased from the drop in temperature. So store your bag, I mean, store your bike in a temperature of around 59 to 95 degrees. So preferably inside the house. If you can't store it in that temperature and you have to store it in somewhere cold, well, that is fine. What you would just have to do is once you start riding, don't crank all the way full power, just you know, pedal a little bit, use some a little bit of power. Let the engine, let the motor and the battery warm up a little bit before you actually increase your speed. And also, when riding in the cold, especially when riding in the, in the snow, you wanna make sure that your tires are not overfilled because you want it to be able to go on the snow and make sure that you're not breaking too hard you know, when you do end up uh, breaking. But overall guys, that's all the tips that I have for you guys when it comes to winter riding. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Help my channel grow. I know I haven't been making a whole lot of e-bike videos lately, but yeah, that is all I have for you for today. Peace.